Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and Merry Christmas to all of you. Very happy to join all of you, residents, commuters, this morning to open the 12 stations of downtown Line 2. Every MRT station, every MRT line we build takes a long time and takes multiple terms of government and multiple transport ministers to complete. <laughs> so, and therefore, each time we have an opening ceremony, we must remember previous governments and previous ministers. And this line has been 15 years from the concept to the opening. And it required hard work, perseverance, meticulous planning. There were many moving parts to coordinate, many unpredictable challenges to overcome. So today, we are celebrating many years of hard work and planning put in by all the policy makers, the engineers, the transport staff, the construction workers. The downtown line two, or the whole downtown line, was first mooted as a Bukit Timah line back in 2001 by the former transport minister, Mr. Yu Chiao Tong. It was studied further, evolved into the longer downtown line to link up Bukit Timah to the city and then to the east. The groundbreaking was done six years later, in 2007, by Mr. Raymond Lim. And Mr. Lui Tak Yu then shepherded the final stages of construction. And two years ago, we were very happy that he and I together went to open the downtown line one in 2013, also around the Christmas period. We're very grateful to Minister Louis, or former Minister Louis, for his vital contributions to putting the, keeping the project on track. In 2013, one of the major con contractors went bankrupt, and we feared that the project would be considerably delayed. But you personally intervened, quickly brought in new contractors, took care of the displaced workers, ensured that the construction program carried on with minimum delay. And the recovery process was so successful that we managed to fully recover the initial delay of six months. And therefore, we are here today to open the downtown line to, as promised, by the end of 2015. But of course, the successful completion also depended on the workers and engineers of the project who had to overcome difficult terrain and to cope with the complexities. For example, when we actually surveyed the route of the tunnel, we found out in Bukit Timah that the tunnel goes through extremely hard granite, granite rock. And we could only tunnel one meter a day instead of the usual eight to 10 meters. And some of the boulders we had to break up and clear were the size of double-decker buses. We also had to work with urban and transport planners to find ingenious ways for some of the stations, particularly Rocho Station, given the limited space and the Rocho Canal, which was above it. In fact, LTA had to divert the road more than 30 times in the last five years. And even Rocho Canal itself had to temporarily give way to the construction. So thank you all who have played a role in making DTL to a reality. The direct train connection to town provided by DTL2 is something that residents in Bukit Panjang and Bukit Timah have long been looking forward to. Families and nature lovers will be able to get to Bukit Timah Nat Nature Reserve, the Botanic Gardens, and the Jacob Balas Children's Garden more easily. The line is close to 30 schools located along the DTL route, all within five or 10 minutes of a station. And the students, particularly the older ones, will benefit from the DTL too. And some school principals have told us that the older students are going to volunteer to guide and walk the younger students to school from the MRT station so that parents can have peace of mind that the kids are getting to school safely on the MRT. But most importantly, I hope that with the DTL2 and several other new bus services, residents will feel they have more op options 
instead of having to drive. The LTA's tagline for the public comms campaign for DTL2 is give your car a break, and we hope that you will give your car a break too. And hopefully the morning traffic jams on Bukit Timah Road can become a thing of the past. In fact, this is something we hope to do across the island. In the last decade, we've been investing heavily to make public transport accessible, comprehensive and convenient to become your transport mode of choice. The, with a bus services enhancement program, the BSEP, we now have more than 700 additional buses on the road. And from next year onwards, we'll be opening a new MRT line and extension almost every year. So that by 2030, 15 years from now, our rail network will have doubled to 360 kilometers, comparable to London, New York, or Tokyo. And by then, 8 in 10 homes will be within 10 minutes walk of a train station. And between now and, the next, and 2019, which is over the next four years, we will also be adding 99 new trains to, to the stock. We are also improving the light rail system. The Sengkang Pongol LRT system is currently being upgraded. The Bukit Puanjang LRT system already has double carriages and I just checked with the MP just now, and Inghua tells me it's improved. He's very grateful. Equally importantly, we are investing heavily in infrastructure and maintenance to reduce train disruptions, to make for a more reliable public transport system. We are good, notwithstanding the incidents we have from time to time, but we are far from as good as we want to be, and as we can be, and as some others are and we want to be world-class, and we are working hard to get there. It's not just more trains and buses. We are making improvements to all aspects of the journey, more sheltered walkways, cycling paths, park connectors, to make the last mile of your journey a convenient one. And also introducing new technologies and schemes, like real-time tracking of buses, like putting out publicly public transport data and the APIs, the, the application programming interfaces for apps so people can make use of the data and can tell you when your bus is about to come, when you must wake up and hurry up, and when you can take a bit more time and have another cup of coffee. And we're even exploring autonomous vehicles because they are coming, the technology is improving, and we are finding it a great challenge to find enough bus drivers and train drivers. Trains are already driverless, but buses, one day, these things will happen. We are doing all this because an excellent public transport system is a big part of a beautiful and livable home. Public transport is the most efficient way for our people to get around in a compact city like this. And also, a public transport network is a community space and a shared experience. Every day, Two million people take the bus or the train twice a day or more to go to work or school and then to go back again. And how we travel every day influences significantly our experiences, our perceptions of Singapore, influences how livable our city is, how pleasant our lives are. So it's important that we have a transport system that everyone will not only use but will enjoy using. Ultimately, we aim to make Singapore a safe, green, car-light city. Car-light, not car-like. <laughs> Where all of us can get around the island conveniently, connect with our friends and families seamlessly, and including the vulnerable and the elderly who need help getting about, so that all of us can get to where we need to be, do the things we need to do, and live well in a world-class city. The DTL opening today is one more step towards becoming such a city. We know what we want to do, we know how to do it, so let's board the train and start our journey together and get it done. Thank you very much. <laughs>